Welcome back to Viper Bites, and yet again, we are here bringing you an emergency podcast as once again, we have a trade go down in the National Football League, and this time, it centers around the Indianapolis Colts and the Atlanta Falcons. Now, we've seen Russell Wilson, he got traded to the Denver Broncos. Then we saw the Indianapolis Colts get in on the action, traded Carson Wentz to the Washington Commanders, followed by Deshaun Watson finding himself a new home in Cleveland. Now, Speaking of Deshaun Watson, for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. And we've seen that. The courting of Deshaun Watson between the New Orleans Saints, the Atlanta Falcons, the, the Cle- uh, Cleveland Browns here. We've seen all these teams get in on it, and there has been some follow from it. Baker Mayfield, he, he was unhappy. We don't know if Matt Ryan was unhappy, but hey, when you're playing musical chairs and you cue up that music, ice, ice, baby, and everyone's dancing around those chairs, Eventually, there's going to be no chairs for anyone to sit down. And Matt Ryan, he found himself a seat in Indianapolis as he is heading to the Colts for a 2022 third-round pick. Now, Mayfield, yeah, sorry, you still got no home. Jimmy Garoppolo, eh, maybe two, two, two seconds is probably too much for you right now. But, hey, the Atlanta Falcons, they wasted very little time getting back in the action, knowing, hey, we need a quarterback. Yeah, we sure maybe we could still draft one in Malik Willis here a little bit later, but let's bring ourselves a quarterback that can kind of bridge that gap for the time being. And they went off and they signed former Las Vegas Raider quarterback Marcus Mariota to a two-year deal, a quarterback whom Arthur Smith has a very familiar relationship with going back to time in Tennessee. Now, technically, in Tennessee, Ryan Tannehill did replace Marcus Mariota, so hopefully things are kind of chill now between the two. I'm sure they'll be fine. But what does this really mean? The biggest part of this all is we get Marcus Mariota versus Jameis Winston two times a season, just like we intended back in 2015 when both Winston and Mariota were drafted first and second overall. Boy, that NFC South division, it is loaded up with quarterback talent. I mean, you got the first overall pick in 2015, Jameis Winston. You got the second overall pick in 2015 in Marcus Mariota. And you got the third overall pick in 2018 in Sam Darnold to go around with some guy who was selected 199th overall in 2000. Tom Brady at the Buccaneers. Okay, now there's not a whole lot of good news to bring up when we look at the Falcons. They are clearly in rebuild right now, not even close to reload. It is full out rebuild in Atlanta. Now, the Colts, they traded. <laughs> Here's where it's going to get fun. Now, follow along if you can, because the next little bit is going to make probably zero sense to you. The Colts traded Carson Wentz and a second round pick and a seventh round pick to Washington for a two, a three, and another third that could become a second. Then turned that around and flipped that into two thirds into Matt Ryan. So those two thirds they kind of acquired, they flipped that into Matt Ryan essentially. And then on top of that, so the Colts then added Matt Ryan. They lost Carson Wentz. They weren't forced to eat any money in the Ryan deal. They gained a third that may be a second, and they made Atlanta eat forty point five million in dead cap. Not only that, let's go a little bit further. How smart are the Colts right now? They lowered Matt Ryan's 2022 cap hit to 28 million, which is less than what Carson Wentz's cap hit is going to be. Now, I don't know how you do all that, but somehow the Colts, you know what? They stood, stepped in a pile of crap, and now they smell like roses somehow. <laughs> well, at least Matt Ryan's trade will cure. We talked about that $40.5 million cap hit for the Falcons. That is the largest dead cap hit in NFL history by nearly $7 million. So really, Atlanta fans, Matt Ryan's never truly going to be gone. Now, let's talk about Falcons here. I, I, one more little thing here. The last time that Matt Ryan did not start week one for the Atlanta Falcons. You have to go all the way back to 2007 when Joey Harrington, yes, Joey Joey Harrington, former Detroit Lion, former Oregon Duck, was under center. Now, let's look what Matt Ryan did in his Atlanta Falcon tenure. The 2016 Offensive Player of the Year. The 2016 NFL MVP. 2008 Offensive Rookie of the Year. Four-time Pro Bowl selection. He has 365 passing touchdowns. That is ninth most in NFL history. Yeah, that's not too bad, but wait, there's more. He has thrown for 59,735 yards. That is the eighth most in NFL history. He trails Dan Marino by a mere 1,626 yards, and he is 4,353 yards away from passing Ben Roethlisberger, who currently sits fifth all-time. Why is that important? Listen, 
we like to give Matt Ryan a bum deal. Let's, let's be honest here. And obviously, Matt Ryan coming in over Carson Wentz is a huge improvement for the Indianapolis Colts. Since the start of the 2016 season, Matt Ryan leads the NFL. Let me re- say that one more time. Matt Ryan leads the NFL in passing yards with 26,978 and his fifth in touchdown passes with 165. That's all per Evan Kaplan there. So that is actually fact checking. So don't worry. I did some fact checking before I started on the show. Last season, he led the Falcons to a 7-10 and record, throwing for 3,968 yards. That was the 11th most in the National Football League. He completed 67% of his attempts while tossing 20 touchdowns. And yes, he only threw one to Kyle Pitts last year. So that's going to be good. As for the Colts, they will be starting their seventh different quarterback in seven seasons. Well, I guess technically the sixth different quarterback in seven seasons. 2016, Andrew Luck. 2017, Scott Tilzone. 2018, Andrew Luck again. 2019, Jacoby Brissett. 2020, Philip Rivers. 2021, Carson Wentz. 2022, Matt Ryan. Assuming he stays healthy and is able to play. Now, Wentz last season simply could not get the job done when it mattered the most. I'm not sure what that locker room dynamic looked like. But on the field, it wasn't that bad. I mean, Carson Wentz did toss 27 touchdowns to only seven interceptions, one of the better ratios in the National Football League. But he only completed 62.4% of those passing attempts for 3,563 yards. In fact, the Colts were 25th in passing yards per game at a 197.7 per, while ranking second in rushing yards per contest with 149.7 per game. Now, Matt Ryan, here's some... uh, uh, player profile numbers here for you. Matt Ryan's 7.8% accuracy rating was eighth last season. On deep ball completion percentages, he was third. When it came to, uh, he was fourth in pressure completion percentage, which is important because when we look at how PFF kind of talked about him and how they graded Matt Ryan here, well, <laughs> Matt Ryan last season with a clean pocket, 90.4 pass rating. Under pressure, 50.1. Ryan was under pressure 40% of his dropbacks last year, which was the second most in the National Football League. I don't think he's going to have that problem with the Indianapolis Colts. And they've got some guy named Jonathan Taylor there to kind of take a little bit of that pressure off. But hey, Matt Ryan sacked 170 times over the last four years in Atlanta. Don't worry, it ain't going to happen in Indianapolis, which is going to make Matt Ryan very, very dangerous. We talked about that Carson Wentz 20, uh, 27 to 7 ratio as far as touchdowns to interceptions. I would not be surprised if Matt Ryan actually improves on that with that protection here. Now, could here's what I want to have some fun here. Could the Colts bring back a familiar face for Matt Ryan to work with? They have all this cap space. What are they going to do with it? They know they got it. And Julio Jones is still a free agent. I know things didn't go well for Julio last year in Tennessee, but maybe, maybe reuniting with Matt Ryan will spark that fire once again. Besides, He doesn't have to be the guy in Indianapolis. They have Michael Pittman, who's more than capable of bearing that load amongst the pass catchers there in Indianapolis. Now, T.Y. Hilton, he's a free agent. We just seen Zach Paschal sign with the Philadelphia Eagles. So behind Pittman right now, you look at Michael Strahan and Ashton Doolin as the top two options. I get technically Paris Campbell is there, but he's only there for a week or two. We know how this plays out for the Colts and Paris Campbell. With that all being said, this is a tremendous move for the Indianapolis Colts. It says, hey, we are here to win now. Much better option than what Baker Mayfield would have possibly given them. And they still kind of keep the cap because they made Atlanta eat everything in this deal. This is what you call a win for Indianapolis. And hey, much respect to the Atlanta Falcons for doing right by Matt Ryan and giving him an opportunity to compete because we know Atlanta wasn't going to be there for the next few years. So you know what? This is a nice little way of saying from Atlanta saying to Matt Ryan, thank you for your time here in Atlanta. Now go out and get yourself a Super Bowl ring with the Indianapolis Colts. Can you do that? I don't know. But hey, stay tuned because there's lots of more off-season action going to go down here in the next little while. And make sure to head to fantasypoints.com, enter promo code VIPERS22 and get 10% off that subscription today. That's one of those things you do not want to miss out. We'll see you.